Choosing whether to breastfeed or formula feed your baby is one of the first decisions expected parents will make. Which one is better? Joining me to talk about this is lactation consultant Patty Jacobson from the Bellevue Women's Care Center, a division of Ellis Medicine. Thank you so much for joining me. Well, thank you for having me. So Patty, what are the benefits of breastfeeding versus formula feeding? Some moms will say, well, I want to breastfeed because I heard I will lose weight. That's like a 50-50. And breastfeeding is showing some promising um, in, reduce, in reducing premenopausal breast and ovarian cancer in a mother. Another great benefit for the mom, it does reduce uh, postpartum hemorrhage. Also, um, the baby. So then I'll switch to the baby and I'll say, what benefits are there for your baby? And most parents, of course, start out with the antibodies, and they're absolutely right. I always tell them also, it's like a free vaccination. The antibodies, of course, make, um, will help the baby to have less um, diarrhea, um, ear infections, and with moms going back to work nowadays okay. and the baby going to daycare so young, these are protections that we need for our newborn. Another uh, benefit that's being shown nowadays is that they possibly might score a little higher on a standardized IQ test. What's the most difficult thing for moms in the beginning? I, I know it was very difficult in the beginning and I almost quit. Right. So mm -hmm. what, what do you recommend? First of all, that a parent take a prenatal breastfeeding class, whatever hospital they're going to deliver in, call up, find out when the class is on. Besides the class, because I mm -hmm. took that class, for mm -hmm. example, there was pain also, like what should moms expect so that they don't quit like after the first, right. second week because, you know, the first week I was fine, but then after that, that's when, oh my God, I don't know if I can I keep doing it. this. So in, what, what can we tell moms, like this is what to expect, right. don't quit. Right, in the hospital, uh, we are there, in all hospitals, the nurses are there, the nursing staff is there 24 seven. Ring your bell, call the nurse, have them come out and teach you positioning. Once we, I think the most important is to get our mother's position correctly. Never lean to your baby, always bring your baby to you. When I walk into the room often, I find a mom leaning down to her baby. I'll fix her pillows. Pillows are very important nowadays. I bring the baby up to her and immediately they'll say, wow, this doesn't hurt as much. I will also show them how to get the baby off. They just think most times babies will fall off. Sometimes they do, sometimes, sometimes they don't. So I have to show the mom how to break the latch and break the seal so that they don't injure themselves and their right. baby as well. Um, I'll encourage them to support and hold the breast through the feeding. A lot of moms will get the baby on and then forget to hold the breast. And they do need to do that because the more support they do with the breast, the less likely it'll be that it'll start to slide and fall out of the baby's mouth. We also will help them um, change positions. And there are four positions that we focus on. So we feel that a variety of positioning and changing with each feeding may lessen some of the degree of soreness. There is sometimes some soreness <laughs> associated with oh, breastfeeding. There is. <laughs> and, and that is true. And as, when they are ready for discharge, um, they have our phone number. They can call Bellevue 24 seven. They can come back in for help. We will help them with whatever problems that may arise. And, they, and we also have a breastfeeding support group and a parent can come back to the group as well and not only learn a little bit from me, but learn from mothers to mothers. And that's a wonderful place because breastfeeding truly takes patience, practice, right. and support. How do you know if the baby had enough? That, that's, Paula, that question comes up constantly. Are you sure my baby's getting enough? So it's up to us to reassure the parent that in the beginning, the baby's stomach is teeny tiny and can only hold about one teaspoon. A baby can nurse about 10 to 12 times a day, and that is considered normal. Counting the wet diapers, once home, we usually look for six wet diapers a day, and we usually look for two or more bowel movements a day. And the color of the stool is also indicative of how well the baby is doing. Okay. So by day four, the stool should be yellow mustard that color. If it's green, I tell them to call me. When should you stop breastfeeding? Right now, the American Academy of Pediatrics is encouraging six exclusive months of breastfeeding, then the introduction of food, and then nursing up until a year of age. Okay. And what about the moms that have to go back to work? Working does present its own problems, unfortunately. What kind of a breast pump should you buy? You want one that's very good, highly recommended. 
um, double because you can get done a little bit faster. You would like an electric pump. And when you're at work, when you're still pregnant, that's when I like them to start looking around. Go to your boss and say, you know what, I am going to come back and I am going to pump my milk. Is there any place here that might be suitable? Some of them are moms have to go back to work as early as six weeks. So if we could pump every day, freeze a little bit of milk. Milk is good in the freezer for many months. Then when mom does go back to work, she can rely on some frozen milk. Thank you so much, Patty. Oh, it was my pleasure. Thank you. And if you would like to know more about breastfeeding your baby, just log on to my website, parentologywithpaula.com.